My name is Mario Paniccia. I'm currently an Intel Fellow and the Director of the Photonics Technology Lab at Intel Corporation, where predominantly my lab has been focused on driving and enabling what we call silicon photonics. When will silicon photonics have a significant share of telecom or other markets? So if you first understand silicon photonics, the, the, the goal of silicon photonics is to build optical devices out of the same material and platform that we do our integrated circuits. So building these modulators, detectors, lasers, et cetera, building them in a planar fashion, manufacture them in the same factories where we build our ICs. And over the last couple of years, we and the rest of the industry and a lot of the research community have demonstrated that you can build optical devices in silicon and that you can build performance of these devices that actually compete or comparable to what exists today commercially in 3.5 materials. And the next question is then, what's the next step? So now that we've proven we can build optical devices out of silicon, the next phase is just how do we drive silicon photonics to commercialization? And there's a couple of key things that have to happen. The first one is, it's not about silicon photonic devices. It's about lots of these devices and integrating them, to, in, integrating them together. Just like Moore's law, it's not the ability to make one transistor, it's the ability to integrate thousands and millions, and now we have processors with billions of transistors on a single chip. So the next phase of silicon photonics is first start looking at integration of these devices together and how do we use those integration of optical devices to build new devices with form factors and size that you can't do with discretes. Once you demonstrate that, and now we're looking at aggregate bandwidths of hundreds of gigabits moving to 400 gigabits, and long term our quest is to get to a terabit per second on a chip the size of your fingernail, you now have to start dealing with the commercial aspects. How do you deal with packaging? How do you deal with assembly? How do you co-package photonic devices with the CPU? And how do you deal with thermal constraints and assembly and test in similar ways that we do high volume manufacturing today? So even assembly of these devices is how do we do pick and place? How do we move away from the six axis fiber alignment? And that's the next phase of, of silicon photonics is demonstrating commercial viability through low cost volume manufacturing. What will be the scale of the retooling that might be necessary and on what sort of timeline? So now it comes back to, remember, silicon photonics from a building of the devices, we've, I've always talked about having this constraint of being CMOS compatible. And what we want to do is we don't want to put exotic materials and build these devices in factories that are different. It's the same thing with manufacturing and assembly. We want to develop techniques and technologies that take advantage of CPU manufacturing. How do we put in place resistors, capacitors? Can we ever do that where we put fibers down in the same way? Can we put optical devices and lasers down on a chip using high volume pick and place machines or assembly techniques and packaging techniques that exist today? So it's not about retooling, it's how do we change the way optics is done today, take advantage of what's done in the PC industry, which does hundreds of millions moving to billions of, of devices in the future, and use that technology and morph it to enable optical devices. So the idea is, I call it drafting Moore's Law. Let's not, you know, it's not being ahead of Moore's Law, it's being behind it, taking advantage of infrastructure that already exists and coming up with ways that take advantage of that infrastructure and apply that to optical packaging and, and technology. Would you run down the performance improvements you've seen in silicon photonics in just the last few years and talk about what has driven the rapid development? So if you look at just what's happened over the last couple of years, it's, it's phenomenally been a sea change uh, of technology. So if you look at modulation, prior to 2002, the fastest modulation in silicon was 20 megahertz. We then went to a gigahertz, then 10 gigahertz, and today 40 gigabit per second devices. Detectors, we've demonstrated 40 gigabits per second. Raman lasers didn't exist in silicon a few years ago, and that was a, you know, people were considering that a scientific breakthrough that we can build and get amplification and silicon and, and lasing and, and wavelength conversion. And these are orders of magnitude of device improvement. And the irony of all this is the physics hasn't changed. The physics has been the same, physics is always there. What's really changed is there's a psychological change where people are starting to realize, oh, I didn't realize you could do that in silicon. And just like anything else, innovation thrives innovation. So people are saying, oh, I didn't realize you could do 40 gigabits per second. How do I get to 100? How do I get to 200? And so people take the fundamental learning and start innovating from that. And I think it's an exciting time because we're just at the beginning. 
we're just starting to see silicon photonics come alive and as more people get involved you know you see this at photonics west we now have whole sessions dedicated to silicon photonics you see that at other fundamental optical conferences where silicon photonics is now a, a mainstream session or multiple sessions and this to me is part of the excitement this is not about intel doing silicon photonics this is about taking silicon photonics to the mass market and having multiple people innovate having us come together to drive new technologies and innovate from the fundamental silicon photonics capability. Are there still missing pieces of the puzzle for true computing on a chip? So I always get asked what's left. I think, you know, from what we've demonstrated and what others have demonstrated, I think we have the core building blocks and now it's about integrating them together. Again, depending on the application, you're going to integrate different components together. And everyone talks about this silicon laser. Is that the, the magical piece? And, you know, I'd, although I'm hopeful that silicon lasers will at some point come to fruition, I think it's a far, far ways off. I mean, I think there's a lot of investments happening, a lot of funding, but the fundamentals of silicon lasing is so high that we're going to start with incremental steps where either it's a hybrid approach where you use indium phosphide, either it's co-packaged and coupled into silicon or a hybrid laser where you bond indium phosphide on top of silicon. And that probably is the one area that I think is missing, but I think from where we're at, we can live with Indian phosphate laser sources and then figure out how to combine the two in a low cost volume manufacturable way.